5G, is it just another word that cell phone companies are using for marketing, or is it actually that big a deal? That's what we're gonna talk about today and find out in this video. And I can tell you right off the bat that when 5G does eventually roll out, it could actually be a game changer, so it should be pretty interesting. Let's talk about it. First of all, what the heck is 5G anyway? I hope by now you can at least tell it's supposed to be what comes after 4G, which is the fourth generation of cellular technology in phones. 4G is pretty fast at about 100 megabits per second, but it does have a lot of room for improvement. It's not the best. As you'd expect, 5G will multiply current 4G speeds many times over. The generally accepted requirements for 5G will include speeds between one to 10 gigabits per second or more, and just one millisecond of latency round trip, and a 90% reduction in energy usage, and a huge increase in bandwidth, lots to be improved. What does that all mean though in relation to what we get out of it though? Well, for one thing, the higher bandwidth capacity could mean that cell phone companies will no longer have an excuse to charge such insane prices for data like they do now. Cell companies always claim that these data caps, which are ridiculous, are just because of limits of the cell network itself. They just can't do it, so they have to limit it. But 5G will have hundreds of times more bandwidth so that shouldn't be a concern. If they keep making that excuse, we know that they're just going for a money grab at least. And if we're lucky, we may start to see true unlimited data plans coming back and maybe unlimited data will be as common as unlimited texting again. Another benefit of 5G would be extremely low latency, as I mentioned, which could be as small as one millisecond. Anyone who's played online games knows how important latency is and normally mobile internet has really bad latency. This hasn't really been a big deal until now. No one really cares about latency in a phone, but for the purposes 5G will be used for, low latency is really important and we'll get to that later. The reduced energy usage might not sound too exciting, but remember that a phone's antenna is usually what eats up a huge chunk of the battery, like when you're not on Wi-Fi. So 5G could seriously improve battery life, not only for phones, but also any other devices that needs to connect to the internet using this new technology with the internet of things showing no signs of slowing down, more and more devices in our home will probably be wirelessly connected to the internet. And the less battery they need, the better they will work. And that really brings up an important point, is that 5G isn't expected to just be used for phones. Right now, whenever you hear 4G, it's basically always in the context of cell phones. 5G will not only be used just for phones, of course, but also loads of other devices that need to connect to the internet or directly to each other even. For example, when we get self-driving cars and the cars need to talk to each other on the road in real time so they don't crash into each other, that's where that millisecond latency will be critical. These types of usage cases might seem ridiculous right now, but they are something that the next generation wireless network will need to be able to handle. The Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance, an organization that talks about these types of specifications, says that they expect 5G networks to begin rolling out in about 2020, even sooner in some cases. So if you consider that there's typically a new cellular network generation every 10 years, we'll probably have 5G between 2020 and 2030 as the range of the life of the network. 2G first came out in 1992, then 3G in 2001, and 4G in about 2012 and several companies are planning field tests even right now, like AT&T doing the first 5G tests in Austin, Texas. So it's moving pretty fast. And while all this might not seem necessary right now, consider that we will almost certainly have self-driving cars within the next decade easily. So 5G must be future-proofed or else we'll just be holding ourselves back big time. Even if we don't need the stuff now, we definitely will in the future. So we may as well implement that technology now. And it's also kind of like a push-pull with technology. So if companies know that there's basically unlimited wireless data, they're gonna start making much cooler devices that use it, as opposed to not being able to make devices in the first place because the technology isn't even there. And here's another consideration. What if 5G wasn't just used for mobile internet, but your home internet as well? Think about it. If you have a cell network that is capable of gigabit speeds, huge bandwidth, and extremely low latency, well, that sounds just like wired internet coming into your house, doesn't it? 
if not better. Especially for people in rural areas where fiber optic internet is not available, that could be a good alternative. Companies are no longer gonna have to dig trenches to install miles and miles of fiber optic cabling, getting underground permits and hiring construction crews for each neighborhood, and then you have to pay for it to come to your house. Now you just build one 5G tower, the company does, and anyone within range just has to buy one wireless modem for access, plug it in, and they're done. Way easier. In fact, companies like Qualcomm and Intel have already begun working on these types of chips for 5G modems that I just talked about. And the FCC has already allocated several spectrums to be used with 5G, so they know what needs to be done to build these types of modems and chips already. And if you're interested, those spectrums specifically are in the 28, 37, and 39 gigahertz range. And I believe the one that Intel is working on uses the 28 gigahertz spectrum. Of course, if we start to get this much cheaper access to internet, we're probably gonna see some serious pushback by cable companies as a result. I've already talked about this before, but you wouldn't believe how many cable companies in the US rely on pure monopolies just to rake in money. Many people around the country literally have one choice of internet service provider, who of course just rip you off because they don't care. So I don't think they would be very happy if all of a sudden your cell phone company comes along and gets your business instead by offering faster, more reliable internet. Imagine that losing customers because your company sucks. Now, as I mentioned before, one of the more interesting aspects that could be used with 5G is how it can be used to connect devices together, not just to the internet, in ways that you haven't really thought of before. For example, imagine being able to use a wireless virtual reality headset that doesn't need a wire, but rather uses a small 5G receiver built into it and one on your computer that transmits the data that way. It doesn't have to necessarily connect to a cell tower that low latency could make it possible to stream content from your computer to all sorts of devices in your house. Another example I thought of could be cable boxes. Right now, you have to have a cable box plugged into every TV and each one has to be plugged into the wall with a coaxial cable usually. But what if we had one cable box unit in the whole house that connected to all TVs wirelessly using 5G. Or even a game console that can connect wirelessly to one TV, doesn't need a wire, or potentially multiple TVs. We can have that in the future. Imagine that, one game console that can be played on multiple TVs wirelessly, no more need for split screen. The possibilities here are pretty much endless. We're talking about speeds that could rival today's wired bandwidths. And it's even speculated that 5G could go as fast as 100 gigabits, not just 10. As far as I know, that's faster than any consumer grade cable or interface available today. So for many devices in the future, a wired cable might not be necessary at all unless it uses insane amounts of data. Of course, as wireless transmission speeds increase, so will wired data. So I don't think we'll ever really get to the point where wireless completely replaces wired, at least in high-end systems. But we could use it for stuff that doesn't necessarily need the most amount of data possible. Even outside the home, a big use could be smart cities and wireless infrastructure. I hate to keep bringing up the self-driving cars example, but it is a good example. And we could use roads that sense traffic or talk to cars and tell them where to detour or send alerts for emergencies, all sorts of things. And all of this would be possible because of the supposed efficiency of 5G. If you have a battery that can keep a 5G sensor going for 10 years, which is one of the proposed specifications, well then now you have a device that will work for the entire 5G generation before being replaced. In the future, it seems like everything will be connected to the cloud, which sounds awesome, but also is a bit worrying to be honest. Sometimes I don't really trust the cloud, especially when these devices will presumably be able to access more and more personal data. There's already so much talk about hacks and database breaches these days, it's only gonna get worse. If companies start relying on these wireless infrastructures and don't build in these super strict security protocols, it will definitely be a problem. It would probably get to the point where a computer virus could go from being a minor inconvenience to a really tragic problem possibly, who knows. But I'm sure that they understand that and are working on solutions. I mean, if you have people hacking into traffic lights and stuff, yeah, that'd be a big issue. Now, all of this is still a long ways off, but maybe not as far as we might think. The first 5G phones could come out in 2020, just a couple years away, although they probably won't be very common at first. 
then maybe within a couple more years, we'll start to see most phones using 5G and also some average home devices using them as well, like your fridge or some nonsense like that. The infrastructure stuff on the other hand, like smart roads and smart cities, well, we know how slow the government can be, so maybe if we're lucky, we'll get that stuff at all in a few cities at least. So in conclusion, let's summarize quickly what we talked about. 5G, we're gonna get multiple gigabits of speed at low latency, and we'll probably start to see more and more devices that connect to each other, and hopefully even more wireless stuff in general. Even if a third of this happens, that would be pretty awesome. And I guess that's really it. I think I covered everything, so hopefully you guys found it pretty cool. I would be interested to know what you guys think. You can let us know down in the comments section below. What part of 5G are you most looking forward to? Is it the gigabit cellular speeds or wireless everything devices? Should be fun to talk about. If you guys wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here I hope you'll enjoy. You can click on those even if you're on a phone. And also, if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so it should be worth it and consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button also, or else YouTube might not even show you the new videos at all. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching, and as usual, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.